What's going on, my beautiful people from YouTube? I have a gem for you guys today. And yes, it's giveaways, but it's more than that. It's also pun intended because the next crypto gem just covered these guys. We're talking DeFi Kingdom. I had an opportunity to actually have a conversation with Dreamer, which was really good because instead of doing the normal, like, oh, how amazing are you? I kind of just went the other direction and I said, hey, you guys failed in a couple of places. What's going on? How did you fix it? What did you learn from it? And how are you moving forward? I figured it would be important to ask the questions that other people are not asking. And all I ask in return is for you guys to smash the like button and leave a comment down below so I can pick some freaks and, you know, swag to send you guys. Um, I got some bags. I got I got some stuff from the five kingdoms and I want to make sure I send it to you. And that comment, here's my question. They are doing pretty darn good as far as you know, TV's concerned with the next crypto jam. And this is a really nice show. George, I will see you tomorrow. Um, but these guys have a 9.3 rating on IMDb, which is actually really darn good. Um, what do you think? Can they make it? Will they make it all the way through? Is this going to be a win for DeFi Kingdoms or not? Because they do have a really nice game that they've put together. And I mean, they've been at it for a while now with this game. And I want to see them succeed. And it's one of those things like, I want to see everybody succeed, but will they make the cut? And that is the question. That's all you got to let me know down below in the comments. Have you heard of the Defy Kingdoms? Do you think they're going to be OK? Do you think they're going to actually make it on the next Crypto Jam, like beyond what they've already accomplished? That's kind of the basics. But without further ado, let me get you guys over to Dreamer because he's got some really good information. I was really impressed. I got to say um, I didn't ask him the easy questions. I gave him the hard ones and he still managed to do really, really well. So I talked about DeFi Kingdom before, but I want to make sure I, you guys get to hear from the people that are actually in it. So you guys get to know what it's all about, where they've been and where they're going today. So Dreamer, I appreciate you taking the time to have a little conversation and tell everybody about what's going on within your game or protocol, whatever. I mean, you, you, you tell me, what is it first off? I mean, it's kind of bold. So the long-term vision is to build a MMORPG on the blockchain where it's all powered by blockchain technology. So there is a game being built. We've been building it for two years. Now games take a long time to build. Uh, there's a lot of pieces to it. If we think about traditional role-playing games, there's always kind of a, a market made up in the game. Uh, that market is usually gathering resources, crafting potions, weapons, and the armor to make your hero more strong and able to take on challenges. Uh, in order to plan for that, we have launched a DEX that allows people to get in, bring their money into the game. Uh, we have an in-game marketplace for hero NFTs. So as you build your hero, you can sell them, um, you can rent them, and it can be a, a source of income if you choose to. Uh, we're also solving for and exchanging all those um, minor resources like fish that you catch and plants that you garden for and um, forage for. So as we're laying all these pieces of foundation, we're now starting to add combat. So that foundation is going to feed into so much of the future game of player versus player, player versus environment as you travel around. So I've seen this thing from where you had one screen to where it is today, where I get lost and get to like get, getting in there. I'm like, wait, where was I again? It's just grown so rapidly. But what's the plan to onboard new users that might be like overwhelmed with everything that they can do in the game? Yeah, it's a good question. So. The first thing we did is we revamped our static website. So before, in order to do anything in the game, you had to connect your wallet and get right in the game. Launched yesterday, if you go to DeepBikingdoms.com, you'll see a, a completely new website that identifies six core concepts to understand the gameplay of DeepBike Kingdoms. Each one of those steps breaks out to more information and uh, allows you to kind of get in the game at whatever hook gets you, right? The next step is going to be onboarding and education. So we're working with various wallet solutions to make it easier for new players to get in without having to get a long seed phrase and everything. Um, the education piece is gonna be really interesting. Tutorials that walk you through step by step and maybe you know releasing rewards as you go as one option. It really allows new players to have the feeling of a tutorial experience that isn't boring. Um, so that that's really on the horizon to make this very complex game and protocol to be much more digestible to a new user. So a lot of people have made videos and tutorials already. Are you saying that these new tutorials are gonna be coming from you guys instead of content creators out there? Uh, when I say tutorial, I think it's more of, uh, think of it as like an experience in the game. So when you go to start up a new game on your console, you usually, you're not gonna get a data heavy tutorial anymore. Usually it's like, 
the story is happening and you're looking at how do I move? What do I do? Uh, it's going to be. Can you, can you do the moving again? I think that was really good that, for demonstration. How do you move and what do you do? Um, but when you get into DeFi Kingdoms, the idea is we have a lot of data. Do you have a wallet? Oh, you don't. So let's we're going to prompt certain things to help that. Do you have jewel for gas? Oh, you don't. Let's prompt the, the shipyard, the docks and, and have our on ramp or our bridge be the first thing we focus on. Oh, do you have your like realm tokens to summon heroes? Oh, you don't. Let's talk about what the dex is and how you get these tokens. Oh, you now you have those. You can go buy heroes. What is a hero? What is questing? And now you can kind of go step by step. And then as you prompt piece by piece and maybe have rewards along the way, now the user doesn't realize they're even in a tutorial. They're just experiencing the game that the game is looking at the data in the wallet, seeing what you have and don't have and prompting certain things. Maybe a player never will get a hero because they only want to be in the jeweler right. and be a long-term investor. But every time that player is going to come in, there'll be a little prompt like, hey, we're waiting for you to buy a hero. Those kind of little adjustments are going to change the experience for a new player. But it won't eliminate the need for really good tutorials out there. People have made incredible tutorials about how to summon, the strategy behind it, and we encourage all that. We're not going to be replacing that. The game itself needs to hold your hand a little bit better to get you to from point A to B all the way to Z. Yeah, no, that's going to make a huge difference because I've, I've heard from people like, where do I start? And having that walkthrough is going to make a world of a difference. But er, let's, let me ask you about the people who have been in the game and maybe they felt still, they still like they got burned by it. I, I always look at it, you know, the, the user needs to make their own decisions. Are they buying? Are they selling? All those things. Markets go up and down. Um, but there was an exploit that took place with your platform. And I know some people are like, I'm never going back. And I was like, you still got money there? Yeah, but I'm not. I don't even want to touch it. What happened exactly? And what would you say to those people that aren't sure if they would have come back? Sure. So, I mean, if you look at the timing of everything that happened last year, um, there was an exploit in a contract related to a mining function in the game. And this is something that we actually were very transparent about that we saw. Uh, I think it was months before, you know, think people started to over FUD and everything about it. Something that people were trying to hide. Nobody kind of unearthed it. Uh, I think our Solidity guys were looking for a solution that wasn't going to disrupt everybody's gameplay. So we were aware that some people were overmining, essentially. A lot of times when you throw the word exploit around, you're thinking about people like, you know, draining funds or ripping people off or people getting hacked. Let's be clear, none of that took place. There was a part of the game where some people were exploiting through gameplay, through transactions, um, a higher yield on unlocking through mining. Now, there was a cost of shutting that all down for everybody while we figure it out or taking our time to figure it out while we built the rest of the game. Now, some people felt that took too long. And we, when we identified that it took too long, we corrected it and I think, I think, I don't remember exactly how long. Um, but when it was corrected, that didn't sit well with some people. It was a learning experience for us. Were we transparent that it existed? Tried to be, we have an AMA every week. Did we feel like anybody was really getting ripped off? Well, we're working at a solution that didn't stop the whole progression of the game. If it were to, as something similar were to introduce itself again, would we, you know, learn our lesson and take it a lot more seriously up front and choose a disruptive approach? Quite possibly. But I feel like a lot of people's emotional um, attachment to that event and the event that I am not a Solidity developer, even in my recounting of it, I'm sure that Fox and others could add a lot more. So apologies if there's any imperfections in that, um, in my recollection. But I, I do feel like, um, it happened at a time when the world is falling apart. Yeah. And we were doing our best to deliver to a, a community that loved the potential of the product. And with everything dropping and our tokens being linked in an AMM protocol style DEX, if everything is selling, even if somebody doesn't sell Jewel at all, the price drops. As price drops and we identify a, a, a different reasons to be upset, people start selling off and there is a snowball effect. Um, so everybody was affected. Uh, we were affected, and what really affected us more was the hack that occurred a few months after on not a hack of our uh, uh, contracts, but of the Harmony blockchain. You know, a lot of us were affected by that. It's been a year. We are still here. We put out more in the bear market than in that bull market. With all of that hype and excitement and, and money coming in and our price appreciation, we've only had dropping in prices, some people exiting and frustrated, and yet we have built more than I think any other team in the bear market. So for those that are wondering, hey, could they come back? We're a team that's learning. We're learning along the way. We also feel like we have put out so much in the bull and the bear market. We hope that gains trust. 
With that one event, I invite people to learn a little bit more about it. In my opinion, the issue there was timing from identifying and resolving and the prioritization that needed to take place over new builds. And that's something we'll improve on in the future. Now with both the exploit and the hack, did that change the way you guys approach the, you know, like you're, you're about to launch PVP soon. It, it, did it change the way you guys are coding, the way you're review, reviewing code, the way you're going about business now? Sure. So I think on the review side, you know, we were working with Hacken, we're working with like two other auditors as well. Um, if we look at a contract and it carries some type of financial value. So right now we're looking to announce um, like our order book style decks. And that is going to be a way for people to buy and sell like fish and everything at smaller quantities uh, so that we don't need to make liquidity and the decks for everything. Um, that's going to carry a lot of risk. That needs to be airtight. We've had, we paid a lot of money to get that audited. Um, you know, audits are very important to find things like this. With the, on the mining, on the quest side, those contracts were audited, I believe, but this was never really found until internally. So what can we do internally with things coming out? Multiple auditing providers, which we have now. Um, longer testing period. So rather than trying to release things every week, we release things when they're ready. That tends to be every two to three weeks, but even our, our largest release, uh, Hero's Best Friend, that spanned over like a week and a half or over two weeks to make sure that every piece of the release was tested and safe. Um, so definitely a lot of lessons learned on the review side. Um, on the like, what chain are we on and how safe is the chain side? Definitely approaching our chain partners with much more caution. You know, being on multiple chains is important because we have business continuity. If one goes down, we got another. And we saw that with Avalanche and they've stepped up to be an amazing partner. Working with Clayton has been an interesting intro in that, conver in that relationship. And we're considering other relationships as well. So we look in our chain partners, we look for support with developers, support with safety. You know, there wasn't a lot of communication with the prior chain. Avalanche guys, they look around corners and they hit us up whenever the subnet is looking a little funky in any way. It's been incredible for safety and stability. Awesome. No, I mean, it's exciting to hear that it matters, right? That it's something that you guys want to make sure it's done right. Um, you used to buy, I mentioned PVP. When is that coming up? When is that happening? Because it might have been played in the background while we we're talking. Yeah, what's we're going on? A little snippet here. So essentially, we're going to call this combat for now instead of just saying PVP. But the combat system is a 3v3 system that can be plugged in in many parts of the game. So your heroes on the left, see the enemies on the right. Um, that might be player versus player. That might be player versus environment where you have like a large enemy spawn at one part of the map in one chain or part of a realm that you'll have to travel to and compete to uh, meet like a certain challenge. Uh, the ladder system that's used in duels, we're gonna be using something similar where you will have seasons in this 3v3 style combat system that have so many different abilities, thousands of abilities um, embedded across all the heroes uh, to go through uh, a ladder system of, if you win, you gain points, you get higher levels, higher levels, you release rewards like we do in duels. Um, so really excited about that PVP coming out later um, also tournaments as well, bracketed style tournaments. Now the order of what that will happen. So I just talked about combat. Combat's gonna feed in the PVE first because the testing ground is kind of a, a form of PVE, but it's just testing. What's coming next is gonna be the next step in PVE with our like challenges offering. After that, we're really gonna need to own in on the equipment because we don't wanna get the PVP prior to your heroes having weapons and, and armor and everything. That's going to require crafting. Crafting is going to be massive. It's going to start factoring in other assets like land and, and utilizing um, everything that's come before is going to feed in the crafting. I imagine PvP is going to be best positioned after we get through combat, implemented through PvE, traveling across the map, identifying weapons and armor to be equipped and adjust your hero, crafting of that, and then introduce competition. Maybe there will be a spot in between to introduce it sooner, but really, if it's introduced with all of those other foundational building blocks, it's going to be massive. It's going to be so much fun. So basically, whoever gets set up for success now is going to reap the benefits once the PVE comes out. Is that right? I mean, you need, you need the stuff to battle. For, for sure, you can you can make that argument. I think in the like experience you're gaining in your heroes, it takes a long time to level up. Um, and the higher level heroes are more expensive, so it's there's even some classes, you know, it's hard to go buy a Mythic Dreadknight level 20. You know, people that have those are keeping them, right? Um, 
And then on the, the pet side, so pets are their first foray into equipment. You can now feed your pet and equip it and it makes your hero better. Um, the next steps of uh, challenges are going to give first access to really unique things that are going to lay the groundwork for equipment and other things. So being involved in challenges does then open you up to all the, the steps that are going to be coming out there. Now, if somebody's never heard of DeFi Kingdoms, how do they get started? How do they find you guys? What, like, what's the starting point for them? Sure. So I would go to DeFiKingdoms.com. That's our new revamped website. It is there to help you understand exactly what we are. You know, a commander style MMORPG that really transcends every part of Web3 where you can bridge, you can trade, you can lend everything in Web3 in the game. And as part of the actual game, play a fantastical, beautiful uh, game that kind of brings you back to maybe the Zelda and old school Final Fantasy days. Uh, so go check it out, DeFiKingdoms.com, hop in our Discord, follow us on Twitter. It's just add DeFi Kingdoms. Uh, I'm Dreamer DFK if you want to follow me on Twitter, but come check us out. We'd love to have as many as are interested in the genre or the space. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate you guys sticking through the end of the video. If you guys haven't smashed that like button before, we'll do it now. Um, but I also say there is more to this. And the more to this is I hope I see you guys at Cypherpunk 2023. It is tomorrow kicking off. And I want to make sure you guys aren't missing this. If you're in Florida and you're not coming to this thing, I don't know what you're thinking. Reach out to me. I want to make sure you guys get in there and get to experience all that blockchain has to offer. And when I say all the blockchain has to offer, I mean, some really good people talking about some really cool stuff. And yours truly happens to be one of them. But yeah, you guys have a great one. I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you all so much 